everybody, Pastor Bill here, and we're back with the little Mitsubishi tractor, the S370 Satoff. And uh, today we got a bunch of parts. We got a uh, gasket set. We got the, uh, the book that tells us the torque specs and all the stuff, how to put it together. And uh, we got a water, brand new water pump. We're going to be changing the oil in it. And we're going to see if we can get maybe get this thing running today. But the primary goal today is we're going to rebuild this cylinder head and uh, show you how to do it without taking it to a machine shop. We already checked the cylinder head and we know that it's flat. We checked it. So uh, you'll see that in the videos as we go. And uh, so let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about cleaning up the the old head gasket material. This stuff right here is sometimes real hard to get off. And some people just want to get in there with a grinder and everything else. But see, this this area here has got to maintain uh, completely flat. So the best way to do, do it is to scrape off as much as you can and then use an, an, an abrasive that doesn't take off the metal. Uh, on a, on a grinding wheel like maybe like a, a a wire wheel or something like that that way you have the, the material is good then after you get it off you need to uh, check and see how flat it is come across it several ways with a, a straight edge now if you note here I have uh, uh, rags and paper towel shoved in the stuff that needs to be kept clean so when we're scraping this off we don't want all this material getting down inside the oil pan and stuff like that. Even though I'm going to be taking uh, the, the oil pan off and we're going to be cleaning that off, putting new gaskets on it, maybe even a new oil pump. We'll see. The oil pump is not down in the bottom. It's actually underneath here where the uh, fuel injection is, uh, up inside the front cover on the diesels. But we're going to clean all this off and, uh, and show you how to do that. So here I just got a regular old, uh, you know, scraper. And you notice one side is beveled and one side's flat. Put that beveled edge on there and just start going with it, right? And take your, just, just keep working it and working it. And next thing you know, don't worry about if it falls down into the, the water jacket that much because we're going to be pressure washing all that stuff out. Get all that hard stuff off. Try to work it away from the cylinders as much as possible. And you'll see some of that stuff right there, it's just, it's just hard to get off. After you get done with that, take a razor blade to it. Get a good pair of channel locks or vice grips or a pair of heavy duty pliers and take that razor blade to the block. Razor blades are made out of some pretty hard steel. I guess it is. Here's, you know, this gets down into the, to the parts of the motor you don't want dirt in. And you don't want it down in your water either. But like I said, we're gonna clean all that off. We'll run the hose down in it. See, it's, it's coming off. Take your pair of trusty old vice grips. 
I like to put mine upside down. Do the least one. It comes off. Look at that. And wire wheel will take that, make it look brand new. That's showing that that top of that block looks good. You might go through quite quite a few. Then you do the same thing to the top of the top of the head. Get it all off. Make that thing look good. Then check it. Make sure it's flat. We'll show you how to do that too. Razor blade. See? Look at that. That is clean. All right, here's the, the underneath side of this cylinder head. And it looks like at one time, somebody did have a, let's see some cross hatching here of uh, maybe some filing or something like that. Maybe somebody smoothed it out. That does not look like something the head gasket. Here we see there was a head gasket leak right there and going off and off to the injector side and the gaskets had showed that there may be a leak going out the other way so if we go look at the head gaskets i hope you can see this so this gasket went on just like this and if you notice right here you got here you can see metal, here you can see metal, and here you see some discoloration. Here you got some rust, but I... It's not, not all too bad. I believe whoever put this motor together the first time probably didn't have the correct torque on the cylinder head. Like I said, these little diesel motors have quite a bit of compression. I've heard stories, oh, they only got, you know, 8 to 1 and 5 to 1. It's a diesel motor. Diesel motors means compression. That's, just, that's how diesel ignites, through the compression. It doesn't have spark plugs or anything like that. Compression. And when it loses its compression... It just don't run. They, the symptoms of low compression is hard to start, and then once it gets warmed up, the, they tend to get, get their compression back a little bit. But they tend to have really hard to start. And then the first thing someone wants to do is, is put starting fluid in it. And that's the death of these little small motors. These little small motors do not like starting fluid. They're real precision and they do not like starting fluid. If you have a motor that you're having to constantly put starting fluid in it to start it, first thing is I would do is I would check your glow plugs, make sure your glow plugs are working. A lot of times these little motors, even in the winter time, don't need the glow plugs to start them if they're if they're right. If the compression is right, everything is good on them, they, they just run. They run better and they start easier with the glow plugs, but they will start.
Another thing is, is the, is it losing its fuel prime? Sometimes I'll get a, a leak in the, one of the injectors. This one here is wet on the outside right here. Uh, they get a leak on one of the, in, the injectors somewhere on the line and it'll just start bleeding the fuel back. Gets air in it, makes it really hard to start. It takes a while for the fuel to get caught up into the, back up into the injector. Gets the air, air block. It'll start popping and popping and next thing you know, it'll start running on one cylinder and next thing you know, it's starting to pop on the second cylinder. It's important for these little motors have good compression. I've heard, they say, oh yeah, it's only got five to one compression. That's malarkey. These things probably got, uh, you know, 10 to one, 12 to one, maybe even 14 to one, possibly even 18 to one compression. That's why those cylinder head bolts are so big for these suckers. It's that's a that's a that is a big bolt. That's a bigger bolt that's on a than on a 302 or a 350. That's a big bolt. Why is it a big bolt? Because you don't want them cylinder heads dancing on top of this top of the block. You want them things to be held down tight. So they put big bolts in them because there's a lot of compression. We'll get this thing scraped down as best we can. And note again, use the bevel side and it works better, it works better. This is a good cylinder head. Good cylinder head. And here you got the water jackets. There's might be some Permatex in that one right there. Um, you see, this is your injector port right here. We got even a little Mitsubishi logo on there. You got your intake and you got your exhaust. I guarantee when we pull these valves out, you'll see the, they look like brand new. Somebody's been in this motor. They probably had some good motor work done. And then just faulty putting it back together. A lot of shade tree mechanics out there, you know, don't know how to torque the heads right. So they'll, they'll torque their heads down one time with their with their cheap torque wrench and they didn't use any oil see when you use oil on the bolts when you pour oil down on the bolts and down inside the threads when you torque it up it just it's just smooth all the way to the right torque there's no slipping and popping and banging when you're trying tick 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 it doesn't do none of that it just goes right to the right torque and that's what you want Plus you want to torque these things down to where in sequences, like you would do this one, this one, right? Then this one, this one, then this one and this one. And you would torque it, torque it to, you know, maybe 30 foot pounds on the first go around. Then come back to maybe 60 foot pounds. Then come back to 70 foot pounds and keep doing the same thing. And I'm not sure, probably, I, I would say this is probably a 100 to 120 foot-pound torque on this. I can, just by the size of those bolts. Uh, we're going to look up the specs. We'll find them out exactly what they are. It could only be 90. It could be 90 foot-pounds. I would say not, because you only got four. Four per cylinder. 
you know, some motors they got five per cylinder and some motors six per cylinder. This one's got four per cylinder. It's just a little motor. It's just a little motor. I say, how do you know all that, Pastor Bill? Oh, oh, because Pastor Bill used to be a diesel mechanic and he's rebuilt quite a few motors. He did a lot of in frames on, you know, he's done 671 Detroit's motors and old Pastor Bill's done quite a few international motors. Cummins motors. I've done quite a few motors. And I always like to put a little extra into them. You just take a big can Cummins motor and juice it up a little bit, make it make it good. And once we get the rough part of the head gasket off, the part that bonds, see there's in the head gasket you got this core here, and then you got this stuff here. This stuff here bonds supposed to bond to the metal as it gets hot it bonds to the metal that's why you want the metal i've seen people that coat the top of the uh <laughs> cylinder heads in the block with oil you don't do that it's got to be clean metal you put that head gasket on clean metal now i'll hear people will probably say oh you don't know what you're talking about you should put oil on it that's not that's not the case In fact, when you're putting the, the oily bolts down into this, uh, you, you only want the oil to be on the bolt. And then down in the threads before you do that, and then the surface clean. Use the thinner and everything else. Got to be as clean as possible, grease-free. Razor blade. This is the way it's done right here. Look at that. That's the way it's cleaned. Oh, I just take a grinder and go right to it. Yeah, you go right ahead and just go through the grinder. You're ruining them, ruining your, your block and your cylinder head and you put a grinder to these things. Once we get this all cleaned up, we're gonna check it and make sure it's uh, flat. It's easy to do. We're going to show you. You don't need to go to no machine shop to get it checked. Because I tell you, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg just to check it. Magnaflex it and do all that stuff. Bo boil it. You just put a good old bunch of degreaser on this thing. Let it sit for about 20 minutes. Take the pressure washer to it. I'm going to tell you something. Clean. Clean. I worked on this John Deere tractor one time. I think it was a 4040 or something like that. And the connecting rod came straight through the block. Surprisingly, the crankshaft didn't even get hurt. We took some ultra-fine emery cloth and... Wipe down the, the journal, put a new piston connecting rod in it, welded up the hole in the side of the block. I guarantee that motor's still running today. It was a brand new tractor. Just had a, a, uh, something wrong with it. And you gotta, anytime you do that, you put some emery cloth on it, you wanna use some plastic gauge between the bearing and the just to, just to make sure. Yeah, that thing is that thing is coming nice. See that metal? That that gasket bonds bonds to the head. That's what you want. Now I got some secrets. So I got some secrets. We'll show you. Other than the. I don't, I don't like that type of head gasket right there. I've had 
problems with cars and stuff with high compression motor with those type of head gaskets. But I do got some secrets that make some things bond. And when we're getting ready to put it together, I'll, I'll show you that stuff. I'm going to show you how to save some money. Most of the time, they, you get cylinder leak down test. You got to go to the machine shop to get it done. What your, what your valve is doing. Here's a simple way of doing it right here. Just fill your uh, intake and exhaust ports up with water. Dry it off because we just pressure washed it. And we're gonna lap these valves in anyways. But I'm just showing you. Make sure it's good and dry. Good and dry. I think that's German, good and dry. Good and dry. And if they're lapped in correctly and no carbon deposits on them and stuff like that, they shouldn't leak down. Now this one's leaking down because there's a there's a water hole. There's a the valve cover gasket goes right down into the intake. But if you notice here on the right hand uh intake you'll see there is water seepage from that one now the left intake here's your right intake so this this one here goes right into this intake and there is water coming out here there's a little little, little bit you notice here on the exhaust usually the exhaust is worse the exhaust got a little bit's coming out a little bit right there i guarantee when we lap these things in it's going to be good. That's not bad. And I don't know how many hours this little motor's got on it, but it, <laughs> that's not bad. That's not bad at all. You figure it only got a whole compression for, uh, <laughs> for the time that cylinder comes up and goes back down. That's not bad at all. All right, so do you have to take your cylinder heads to the machine shop to get checked? No, you don't. You know, something like a good framing square is good enough, especially on something small like this. And you know, what you do is you put it on there and check for squareness. Does it, does it rock? That's flat that way. Get, uh-oh, look. I'm getting a little rockage right there. See that? Oh, that's because it was sitting on a hammer. Mm, maybe a little rockage right there. We'll check it out. Yeah, it was sitting on a hammer. That was close.
Next thing is, can you see daylight through any of the areas that's flat? I hear, I hear a little bit of, hear a little bit right there. I'm gonna have to check the tolerances. Might have a little bit of, but you know, that's going across this. This part here might not make a difference. Is it flat in the machined areas? See, that's perfectly flat right there. No rockage. No rockage, perfectly flat. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Nice, see this on their head is in good shape. So all the areas that matter, now in here, if it's a little higher, that's not gonna make a difference. That's not gonna make a difference whatsoever. But all these areas are flat. You cross it in a couple different ways, check and see. And then there's, if you do have something that is not quite right, there's tolerances on how many thousandths of an inch you can get underneath it. Because the, the gasket itself has a certain amount of thickness and give into it. And it's made to squeeze into here. I mean, you can see here's the original machining marks of the cylinder head. You can see it's machined flat right there where it went through. And here you got, you can see where it cuts across into the cylinder. And this is where the, the milling machine went across it and milled this thing perfectly flat. This head is in good shape. Next, we're gonna lap these valves in and put brand new seals on top of these things. And we'll also check, check the valve guides and see if they're okay. I would say they are okay. Seems to be in good shape. That's a good looking head right there. So pretty much everything you see on the table is what we're going to be working with today. We got a, a drill. We got some carburetor cleaner. We're going to dip some stuff in and let them sit and soak and clean up so that they're nice and shiny. And we're going to relap the valves on the head. So let's get rolling on it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the carburetor dip. This stuff is amazing. It'll make a carburetor look like brand new. And we're gonna put the, the bolts in it. They come with this little, little basket so you can retrieve and don't get the stuff all over your hands because this stuff is rough. So we're gonna put the head bolts in it. so we don't get so uh and we'll set it on the ground so we don't have no accidents next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the valve keepers out of the valve springs and we'll start lapping the valves If we were doing a big Chevy or a Ford motor, I would use my valve spring tool, but this is just a small little motor. We'll do one side at a time. Simple, just like that. 
Look at that. It was, it was, so it was like, just like downtown. We'll put this one here. And that one there. That was easy, right? I've always seen people having problems with it. All right. We'll take off the old valve guides. I mean, the valve guide seals. Ow. Pair of pliers. There we go. And I got brand new valve guide keepers thingies. It. Hopefully I got my Sharpie. I don't remember bringing it out here. A little trick so you can see if we're lapping the valves. We know that the when we did the water test on it, the water test that the is this any good? Is it? I need to get a wooden block or something. Put my hammer underneath it. That way it'll fall and smash everything. There we go. So we'll take a look at the valves. You can see there's a little, I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a little bit of pitting on it. It's actually not bad. We could actually put these in the carburetor cleaner too. We might do that too before we reassemble it. Here's the intake valve. It's got a little bit of pitting on it. <clears throat> I don't have, I have no idea how many hours is on this motor. Like I said in the last video, <clears throat> in the last video, um, That there was a 50 stamped on top of the pistons. So, this is valve grinding compound. I know a lot of people, they are, oh, I gotta take my cylinder head to the, cylinder heads to the machine shop. This right here, and a lapping tool, or even a little battery operated drill, and you can lap your valves all by yourself. What I do is I hook the hook the drill on the back side. I'm being careful not to scar it. And that way it gives you some
just like you do if you were doing a hand one. Now on, on these, they got, whoops, there we go. Look at that, good cat-like reflexes. It's got a little thing inside the cap. It's got a little thing that pokes it. Look at it, it's already coming out. Take a little bit like that, put your cap back on. What you don't want is this stuff getting in your valve guides. So you gotta be careful. Take your little little rag so you ain't burn your hand up and just go. You can hear it. It's cutting. And I like to go in reverse. And put a little bit more on it. And it doesn't take much. Just got to get a good seal all the way around. And you can actually hear it when it starts getting smooth. All right, we're going to take the drill off. Pull it out. And we'll see if we can't see the difference. Now, the thing is, you don't want to take all the valves out. You want to put this valve back in the same spot it was at because now it's lapped to that um, hole. So the valve seat that's in there, we'll look at that too. All right, I'll bring it up close to where you can see it. And you see that, it's all the way around. It's got a good, good thing. Let me see if we can't zoom it in. It's about as zoomed in as it's going to get. You can see that. That looks good. There's no bad spots in it whatsoever. Where before it had some little bit of pits in it. This valve actually was sealing pretty good. It's the one next to it that wasn't sealing. Take a sip of hydration, caffeine. It's Father's Day today, working on my Father's Day stuff. All right, we'll put this one back in. And we will do the next one. This one was the bad one. And usually it's the exhaust that's the bad one. This time it's the intake for some reason when we did the water test. Just after I uh, pressure washed the, the cylinder head. If 
All right, we're gonna do the same procedure here. Now I have the hand lapping tool, the little suction cup, and I can tell you, it sucks. It takes forever, especially if you got some pits in it. Try number two, and then we'll show you what it, what it did. Oops. Of course, I just lost it all right there. Like I said, you can hear it. You can hear it when it's when it's about right. Now, like I said, I was going to drop that cylinder head, right? Just teeter tottering on my my hammer. And this, remember when we put it up there before, this was pitted really bad. And that's your intake. And that was the one that was leaking really bad in the, in the video when we poured the water down the cylinder. I'm gonna go rinse these off in water. And it is looking also very awesome. One thing we want to do when we get ready to put it back together is we want to put some fresh oil on it. I think I'm going to get some oil right now. So right here I got some STP 20W50. This is like Harley Davidson motorcycle oil, but this is great assembly lube. I don't care what they say. What we're going to do, intake, we're going to make sure this thing is clean real good. Just dip it in there a little bit. This one, make sure this one's off. We want to get all the valve grinding compounds off of it. And these valves look good. Exhaust valve. This. This side is ready for reassembly. Put the cap back on so we don't have no mistakes. All right, we're gonna reassemble this one side. And what I like to do is I take a little bit of a rag and I put it right here. 
Now make sure the valves are all the way at the top. We're going to put the valve seal on it. This is right because we laid one on one side and one on the other, right? There it is. Just like downtown. Now we'll do the other ones. I mean, that's so simple. People struggle with that stuff. Take the old valve seal. And they're actually not bad, but I know they're, looks like you can almost see a gap at the top and it starts letting the oil down in, or too much of the oil. <clears throat> and that's why the top of the, top of the piston and and the exhaust had a lot of oil in it. There we go. They're still. keepers.
has evaded me. Got both keepers for this one. We got one keeper for this one. We got to find that keeper. Jeepers Creepers, where did it go? There's something. You guys probably seen it when it popped. It's here somewhere. Let me put the camera on hold and we'll find that thing. Okay, I found it. For some reason, it was wasn't gone. It was it was in the hole. I, I just didn't see it. God works that way sometimes. Maybe it was really gone, and then all of a sudden there it was, like back where it needed to be. I got this one in now, and we'll do the other one. Kick one side. That's it. This cylinder head is rebuilt. It's actually ready to get go back on. So the next video that we do is we're going to reinstall the cylinder head back on the, the machine, put the valve train back on, adjust the valve lash, and I'll show you my special stuff to keep the cylinder head gaskets. Copper spray gasket high temp sealant you spray this on there and what happens is this stuff here cause it just bond, bound binds itself to the cylinder head and to the uh, block and to the gasket and as it gets hot it gets tougher and uh, this stuff is awesome this is what they use in race cars and this stuff is the cat's meow right there I know that sounds corny so let me low battery. Come on. So here we go. It's another video done of fixing things with Pastor Bill. Like I said, we're going to be uh, putting this cylinder head back on in the next video which is probably going to be tomorrow because i can smell my uh father's day dinner cooking on a grill and i do not want to be late so you all have a happy uh, father's day and uh, enjoy it it's about like 95 degrees out here but here underneath the shade nice my whole property is just shaded i love it i love it out here it's good being retired